you see, if we involve something, then immediately you see they, you see they, uh, facing difficulties. So, for example, uh, we always urging our friends uh, outside the world any help inside Tibet, mainly in the education field and health. We always welcome. We always urging them. In the meantime, you see, uh, I mentioned to them, please don't put my name. As soon as my name, they are reject from the Chinese government. Like uh, uh, 2008 earthquake in Sichuan, I sent some money to Chinese embassy in New Delhi, refused to take. So this time in Tibetan area, also you see, uh, well, finally, at that time, I donated, I sent the money to Red Cross in Switzerland. Otherwise, there's no way. The Chinese government deliberately stopping. Uh, so, we cannot carry any sort of activities with our name. The true different sort of individuals or different NGOs like that. Uh, I think this time also, is we heard clear instruction to those Chinese missions in Delhi or some other countries, the, any sort of donation with the name of uh, Tibetan organization or Dalai Lama should not accept like that. So not easy. This was, uh, but within Tibetan uh, community outside, uh, firstly, right from the beginning, our first priority is education, modern education, and also the traditional Tibetan Buddhist study. Uh, now last, uh, uh, I think more than, f now last 50 years, we quite successfully, I think entire younger generation in outside Tibet, in free country, uh, all have basic education. Uh, then also the Buddhist study is concerned now, facility for Buddhist study better in India than in Tibet. That's, that's sort of, uh, the reality. Uh, then, uh, that also these basic rights. Uh, women's rights. Uh, women's rights, children's rights. These also, in free country, we always address these things. So in China, and in India, also to some extent, you see the girl, daughter, usually you see look a little bit negative. In China, uh, about a few months ago, you see, I heard one sort of as a program from BBC. I heard, you see, in China, uh, some uh, some village, is one Chinese who resided in London. She visited and carried some research work. And she had interview with BBC program and mentioned when she visited one family, uh, she just wait in their kitchen. Then they see uh, some crying. Then she noticed one new baby born. Then father express, girl, useless, express that way. And eventually, according to that information, eventually that daughter killed. Like that. So just abandoned. These things, I think, very, very, what's the backward sort of the thinking. Of course, the farmers, their sort of main sort of concern is the manual, manual sort of hard work or for cultivation. So they prefer boy not girl. So that way of thinking, now we have to, through education, we, we have to change. I think the Tibetan community, basically Buddhist, so we respect all form of life. So parent may feel, now, oh, oh bad, one girl, but uh, take care, because it's more compassionate to society, like that. The second part, Kasa. Hmm. Hmm. 
I met from time to time some small NGO from mainland China, like environment and human right also. Of course, if they grow more significant, then government <laughs> suppress. <laughs> but you see, the small level, you see, they already. So some of them, you see, came to see me in Dharamsala. And environment, some small NGO about environment, this is some Tibetan also involved. So these are healthy signs, very healthy signs. And then AIDS, sort of the problem of AIDS. Uh, actually, one my friend, one French uh, sort of lady, uh, who once she visited Lhasa and specifically for research about the aid problem. And she, after she returned, she warned me, Da um, Kasa, um, Sex workers. Oh, sex workers. Uh, these things you see there, and these really very, very dangerous. And he, she mentioned the girl from rural area, from village, no education, no awareness about aid danger. So brought to, what's it that? Uh, of brothels. Uh, so she mentioned particularly those, what's it, the ignorant young girl, very, very dangerous. She mentioned to me. So it's a few, uh, occasionally, when I talk to some Tibetan who come from Tibet, and the public talk, uh, occasionally I also mentioned eight, danger of eight, epidemic, like that. So in India, also you see, we carry some sort of program to educate. Because of some Tibetan live in bigger city, uh, danger there. So. We are, we are making every effort, you see, to, to make awareness these things. Next question. Yes, yes, last question. Uh, Your Holiness, I will uh, ask questions first in English and then in Chinese. Yes. Because I assume this is a uh, concern to many Chinese audience. Yes. But my question is that you've been in exile for nearly half century, mm -hmm. and uh, although the spirituality has no borders, you are longing for return to your holy land, must never, never, never given up. So having said that, on what condition you're willing to compromise once Chinese government invited you to return, and how much you will uh, mm. Compromise. Thank you very much. Oh. Uh, let me yes, repeat myself quickly in Chinese. 就是那个, 虽然精神的领袖, 精神没有讲解, 但是达赖喇嘛已经在流亡中已经过了半世纪了。那他想回到自己的故土的这个愿望肯定没有办法。谢谢。Early 80s, uh, then Ding Xiaoping there, of course, under the leadership of Ding Xiaoping, Hu Yangman also there, and Zhao Ziyang also there, uh, the central government. Uh, then at that time, in, in the name of, I think, five leaders, uh, sent a proposal to me, actually invitation, my return, and mentioned the five points about my return. They will send some high officials to receive me from Delhi. Uh, then uh, I will restore all my sort of previous sort of say certain uh, positions uh, like that. So at that time, I immediately responded, no, "This is not the issue. Issue is a six million Tibetan people sort of right, their culture. That's the issue. So unless central government address." Uh, 